so far. My name is Amy Defoe. I'm one of the science teachers here at Graduation Alliance and today is a science live session. Today our topic, one of our topics, is going to be uh, about biodiversity. So we're looking at biology today. Um, I'll show you the agenda here in just a moment but there will be opportunities for you to ask questions about anything that you might be working on or an assignment that you'd like to get some answers or a little bit more information on as well. Um, so before we get started, a couple of things, uh, it's, uh, just to go over, these sessions are re being recorded and it's being recorded now. Um, the sessions are recorded and they're set up in a nice library that we have in all of the different courses here at Graduation Alliance. And um, it's a great resource for you guys because you can go to these at any time that you want, that's convenient for you. Um, you know, maybe you're not able to make it to the session or you're not able to make it through the whole entire session. And so you can go back and you can look at these recordings or maybe what I'm talking about today. You're not just quite yet there. Uh, you'll have the opportunity, you know, as you're going through your course, once you get there, you'll be like, oh, yeah, let's see if there's, a, you know, a live session on this and you can um, have a view of it you know, when you get there. So lots of great opportunities. This is a great resource for you guys to keep going back and um, using. So bear with me if, um, you know, you're not quite yet where we're at in biology or you're in a different subject. Again, I'll still, there'll be still be time in here set up for you to get questions on topics that you are needing some help on, okay? So um, I chose to do biodiversity today because the last couple of sessions that I've done, I did one on genetics two weeks ago, and then last week I did uh, natural selection and evolution. And so this just kind of piggybacks on it, okay? Um, the other thing is, you know, being that we're, at, you know, an online school, which is great, because we get to, you know, get our courses done, earn our credits at a time that is convenient and works for us. Um, it's also nice to have these live sessions because we can have this interaction with, you know, our teachers and our classmates and students. And so I do encourage during these live sessions to, um, you know, you can give your feedback, give questions, answer questions. Um, think of it, you know, as a nice, you know, a forum. Um, where we get to interact with each other. So going off of that, you have the option to turn your video on, turn your video off, whatever you're comfortable with. Same thing with your audio. You can turn your audio, you can mute yourself, you can unmute. Um, you know, if you do have some background noise, it is, you know, I do suggest and I recommend that you do meet yourself so that it doesn't come through on everybody else's computers as well. And you also have a chat box where you can type in your responses. Um, you can also um, ask questions through that chat as well. So whatever works for you, um, whatever's convenient would be great. Hey, welcome. We're just getting started here today. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the agenda so you kind of know what we're going to be looking at today. So I'm going to first start off talking about biodiversity and so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that and that comes from biology um, semester two unit seven is where that's coming from and then we'll have our first section of questions and answers so this is where you can get that one-on-one -on -one, um, real-time feedback on anything that you might be working on that you have some questions about and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk a little bit more about these discussion posts in your courses you'll have discussion posts posts throughout. Usually um, there is one per semester or two per semester um, depending on the course. And so I want to take a, th take a look at um, one of them that we see here in biology and just kind of give you some strategies to help you know, tackle that. And then before we end, the last thing that we'll do is we'll have another opportunity to ask questions and get some help or whatever it is you want to discuss about science. That's what we're here for today is to get what you need done. Okay, so that is the agenda. Let's get started. Okay, so um, biodiversity, ah, that's our topic here. Um, and the first thing I want you to think about is, you know, when we look at a word that somebody might ask, what does that mean? How do you describe that? How would you define that to somebody? And I always like to think of, you know, can we break this word down? Can you, um, do you see maybe a couple words that are in there? Is there a way you can decode a word to help you understand it better? And so when I think of, you know, biodiversity, I see right here, I see this prefix bio. And we see this a lot. Biology, the study of life. Um, so as we think about 
you know, what does bio mean? And what does diversity mean? And then we put those two together. So I'm sure you've heard of diversity and I'm sure you've heard of bio. So we've got life, diversity, meaning different. So we've got the different, um, the different life. That's what we're talking about, okay? So then I have this big old number here, 8.7 million. What do you think that number stands for? Do you think it stands for the number of seconds you've been alive? Does it represent the number of salmon eggs like laid in the year? <laughs> Think in your mind, 8.7 million. And as you continue to read down here, that number represents how many different species scientists believe are living here on Earth. So if you think about our whole entire planet, 8.7 different, 8.7 million different species. Now, as we're thinking about a species, a species is a group of individual organisms. So as you think about humans, homo sapiens, we are a type of species, and we know that there's millions of humans, but again, just one species. Hey, welcome. We're just getting started here today on biodiversity. So as you think about that, 8.7 different, 8.7 million different species. That's a lot. We also have to remember that that number can even be bigger because it's only believed that 80% of land species and 91% of those living in the seas have um, been discovered. So scientists, we know that we're always discovering, we're always learning more. So we know that there's places on earth that we've never explored. And we know that there's species then that haven't been um, identified. Pretty cool to think about. And what's, what I think is, is fascinating is to think is that every one of those species has a particular role, has an importance in um, their being here on Earth, and they add something to it. We're going to take a look at that. Okay, just a little apology. I don't know, my throat's been a little scratchy here today, so I just want to give you that heads up. Hey, welcome. We're just getting started here today. Okay, so what is bio biodiversity? So again, talking about how we can decode that word or break that word down um, as we think about what does it mean to you? If we break that word down, we can get a better idea. And again, this is a great strategy that I always suggest, use it all the time in science, is breaking the word down into different pieces. And do those different parts of the word have different meanings? As we know, bio, right there, bio means life. So we think about biology, it's the study of life, um, a biosphere, it's all the life that's on earth, okay? So we can use that prefix to help us identify part of what that word means. And then we've got diversity. We all know about diversity. It means variety. You put them together and you get biodiversity. So here in this picture, you can see um, some good examples of all of the biodiversity that we have here on earth. What's so cool to think about is we've got organisms. We've got organisms that are just made up of one single cell. Makes up the whole entire body of that organism. Two organisms that are much, much more complex, like a panda. And then you can see we've got some that live in aquatic, in the water. Others that maybe, um, you know, grow in a forest. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay. So why is biodiversity important to us? Why do we study it? Why should we want to know about it? Um, so as we're thinking biodiversity is the variety of all of the living things. That includes our plants, animals, microorganisms, and it also includes their interrelationships that they have with each other. It is the genes that contain, um, the genes that they contain, and it's also the ecosystems that we form. So in simple terms, the word biodiversity can be described as the variety of plants and animal species and the places that they live. So a lot of time that we, we forget about that ecosystem part when we think about biodiversity and then um, sometimes we just think about, oh, it's just the things that are living, just the organisms. But it also includes, again, the places that they live. And what's important about that is those interrelationships, how they all rely on each other. Welcome. We're getting started here on biodiversity. Thanks for joining. So an important aspect of biodiversity is that it's not always apparent how they're connected, how all these species are connected. Kind of think about it like um, if you have like a food chain or a food web and it shows kind of the, the order, the feeding order of how organisms feed off of each other in an ecosystem. If we take one of those out, 
we can create this huge imbalance and it affects the rest of them. So think about it. If you have, you know, um, a grassland type ecosystem and you take away all the grass, you take away the plants. So the rest of that ecosystem falls apart. It won't survive. They depend on each other, as it says here. In other words, the ways in which um, the organisms depend on each other is for their survival. So, no, I didn't even use that. One way you can represent that is by food chains and food webs. Um, I threw this picture in there because, again, as we were talking about 8.7 million different species, these are different types of species of mushrooms. Okay, you think of a mushroom, you probably think of, you know, a mushroom, vegetable, maybe you like it, or it's actually not a vegetable, it's a fungi. Maybe you like it, maybe you're like, oh, gross, do not put that on my pizza, right? Um, as you think about it, there's so many different species, variety of um, different types of mushrooms there. And then we think about ecosystems. We have a diversity of ecosystems. So eco ecosystems include all of the populations of species that live in an area with physical factors in that environment. Populations do not interact with only each other. So when we think about a population, we might be thinking about um, you know, the population in the city that you live, the population of humans in that particular area, okay? So a population is pretty much defined as um, a group of organisms living together, a species living together in a specific area at a specific time, okay? So if we were to say, you know, the population of Seattle, oh my gosh, I have no idea what it is, I'm gonna throw out a number, seven million people, um, so we're talking about right then in a specific area and a specific time is the population. Okay. But again, if you think about it in a population, so think of, you know, a city, um, you think about the humans, they don't only interact with each other, but they're also interacting with those non-living factors, abiotic and biotic factors in that environment. So they're interacting with things like, you know, the weather, the amount of rain, the amount of sunshine, the temperature, and those all have an impact. Um, we use the word abiotic to describe the non-living features of an environment. These would be things like the air, the water, the soil, the sunlight, the temperature, and of course, just the climate in general. To contrast that, the features of an environment that are alive or were once alive are what we call are the biotic. And this includes animals, plants, bacteria living in the area. So going back to our, our city example, you think about a population of humans living in a city, you know, they're dependent upon, you know, that air. What if the air quality gets bad? That's going to have an effect on that population of humans. What if there's no rain and there's a drought? That's going to have an effect on those humans in that population, you know. We're going to have um, more stricter concerns about how we're going to use our water, go into conservation mode. And then we also interact with those biotic factors. So thinking about the other organisms that we live with in that area, bacteria. What if there's a certain type of bacteria that, you know, we get a bloom of and we're affected by that. So each organism in an ecosystem needs a place to live. And that place in which an organism lives is, of course, their habitats. Okay, so a little brief thing about ecosystems. And we'll look briefly at um, some different types of ecosystems, too. Again, if you guys have any questions as I'm going along through this, please go ahead and you can unmute yourself, like I said earlier, or you can use your chat, however you want to, or if you have more to add to this. Here we can see a couple examples of different types of ecosystems that we have here on Earth. We also, you can think of um, biomes. So we've got a desert, a coral reef, prairies, and tundra. And what's interesting about these is they have what we would say different amounts of biodiversity. We can have places that have very high biodiversity and very low biodiversity. And, and that's important because it's actually scientists measure the amount of biodiversity in an area. And the way they do that, a common way to measure biodiversity is to count the total number of species living with a particular area. Tropical regions, so think of like a tropical rainforest, these areas are warm year-round. They have the most biodiversity. So that means that they have the most amount of different types of species living in that area. Um, most of the areas near, near the equator, um, areas that are, you know, don't have extreme temperature, extreme temperature ranges. Temperate regions have summers, have warmer summers, cold winters. They have less biodiversity. So as you probably think of, 
think of like a tundra, you know, pretty harsh conditions, long winters, um, probably short growing season, less food, you're going to have less biodiversity. So you're going to have less, a different variety of species living in that area because of the conditions that it's in. Okay. Regions with cold and dry conditions, um, such as mountaintops, deserts, have even less. It's difficult to measure biodiversity because, as we saw earlier, scientists haven't discovered all of the species here on Earth. Pretty cool to think about it. And why we might think that this is kind of important, thinking about measuring biodiversity, is we know that, we're going to talk a little bit more about this later on here, um, we're losing biodiversity. We're having organisms that are becoming endangered and extinction. And one of the reasons for that is because we're destroying these ecosystems and these habitats. And so we think about like a rainforest. We want to make sure where we have these areas of high, high biodiversity, we want to protect them. We'll talk more about that. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> why is biodiversity important? So why do we care that there's so much variety of life here on Earth? Well, it's important for supporting all the life as we talk about how all these organisms are connected together. We know that it provides us with our food and of course, industrial products and medicines that we use. You know, think about where our medicines come from. They come from, you know, bacteria and fungi and plants. Biodiversity also ensures clean air, water, fertile soils. It provides opportunities, of course, for us, for recreation, tourism, scientific research, and education. It's also a source of cultural identity for many, you know, one particular group as we think of Australia and Australians. Biodiversity is the foundation of a healthy, functioning ecosystems upon which all life depends apart. So again, we keep talking about this kind of a system. Everything is connected together and has a particular role. So it's kind of fun to think about all of these different um, reasons on why biodiversity is important, kind of what we get from them. You know, organisms have a particular role in soil formation. If we take that bacteria out, we take those worms out, our soil is going to be affected by that. I'm just going to let you read through that list for a second. You know, sometimes we don't actually think about these. Okay, there's three types of varieties of biodiversity that we look at in science. We look at genetic diversity, and that's the di diversity in DNA among individuals. We look at species diversity, which is probably what we most think of when we think of biodiversity, and that's the variety of species in a given area. And then we look at ecosystem diversity, and that's the variety of different habitats and ecosystems, biomes, and communities that we have here on Earth. And then we go into, okay, the threats to biodiversity. Um, we know that there are threats and that there are parts of biodiversity that are being um, endangered and being hurt. And we have a little kind of uh, acronym that we would use called HIPPO, if you've ever heard that before. And some of the major threats to biodiversity, we can start with our H. Our H stands for, as we talked about, habitat destruction. So if you think about, if we're removing these habitats, destroying these habitats, we're taking away you know, the places where these organisms are living. They don't have a place to live, they're not gonna survive. So forests all over the world, here's an example, are being cut down and burned for many reasons. Forests in the tropics, like about the rainforest, are being cleared to make room for farms. Tropical, uh, what's hard about this is that tropical forest, um, the soil is very poor. And so the farmers have to keep moving on, destroying more and more forests to grow these crops. So companies also cut down forests for resources. Think of the timber and build houses. Um, or to make room for other types of um, plantations, types of farms in which native animals and plants cannot survive in. So again, if we're taking up that habitat, if we destroy it, we're taking away where these organisms live. Welcome. 
We're going through biodiversity right now. We're talking about the threats to biodiversity. When we go after that H, we have I, which stands for invasive species. Um, an invasive species is an introduced pest species, so to speak. Um, it's caused many native animals and plants to become extinct over the world. So if you think of an introduced or an invasive species, um, they most likely always have a harmful effect on the native species. An, an invasive or introduced species is an organism that's not native, wasn't there before, and it has negative effects on our economy, our environment, and our health. So think about it, if an organism is brought into a new ecosystem, they have a tendency to kind of overtake it and harm the other organisms that are there. An example of this, 24 rabbits were, rabbits were introduced to Australia, this was back in 1859, for hunting. Um, the rabbits, they breed very quickly and in an environment without any of their natural predators, thinking of organisms that would prey upon those rabbits, they continue to reproduce and their numbers increase so quickly that in less than 100 years, there were 600 million across the whole continent. The rabbits took over the resources and the habitats of the native species that were there, like they give the example of the bandicoot, which is now endangered. So again, if we're bringing in these species, they have a tendency to not have those natural predators or threats, threats that they have in their own natural ecosystem, and they tend to overpopulate and take over. Keeping going with our hippo, uh, the first P stands for pollution. Um, pollution can contaminates in the natural environment with help or with harmful, not helpful, harmful substances produced by human activity. We're gonna talk about human activity here. It's gonna be a big thing that's gonna stand out. An obvious example of pollution is an oil spill how this can affect an ecosystem. This happens when oil is released accidentally into the sea from a tanker, pipeline, refinery. The spill forms a thin layer of oil called a slick, poisoning the sea life and damaging the fur feathers of seabirds and of mammals. Due to the contaminated atmosphere in cities, think of air pollution going up, most animals ran away in search of an appropriate place to live. We can witness this as we think about the lack of biodiversity in cities. You know, as we build more and more buildings, um, we're pushing those organisms farther out. The other P goes along with that is population. The growth of the human population is one of the biggest threats to our natural environments today. There are over 7 billion people in the world and that number is growing, growing, growing. Quite simply, there isn't enough room for natural environments to coexist with all these people and the land that they need to provide them with food and shelter. As a result, it's kind of the race of survival of the fittest and animal, animals and plants usually get crushed under those skyscrapers or the hand of a human. And the last one, over-harvesting, which is also known as over-exploitation. What that means is species are over-harvested. They are used faster than they are replaced, which is likely um, going to lead to a decline, and then it can lead to endangerment and extinction. An example of this cod is now too rare to be caught in many areas of the coast of America and in the North Sea, and the situation is the same for many other types of fish. Plant species can also be easily over-harvested. Uh, the Brazil nut might be in danger of extinction because none of its nuts are being left in the rainforest to grow um, to grow new trees. So as we think about, you know, what we're taking from our planet, are we leaving enough? Are we replanting or regrowing enough to keep it in balance? Extinction. So extinction is when all the species of an organism die. Once an organism becomes extinct, it will never come back. So think about that. DNA for that particular species is gone. And endangered species are an intermediate danger of becoming extinct unless actions are taken to protect them. So as many as 30 to 50 percent of all species are possibly heading towards extinction by mid-century. And you're wondering, well, why? 99 percent of currently threatened species are at risk from human activities. Primarily, what we talked about, the big ones that are causing this um, loss of biodiversity is habitat loss, introduction of exotic species or invasive species, and global warming. 
So it kind of gives you this little bit about um, with the hippo, you know, these are our threats and this is what it leads to. A little bit more here on reasons for extinction, like we talked about it. The biggest ones, habitat destruction, pollution, welcome, human overpopulation, invasive species, and climate change. You've probably heard, um, seen a picture similar like this or heard about, you know, climate change as our, we're seeing an increase in temperatures overall here on earth in very long periods of time. We're not just talking about a year or two, we're talking about longer periods of time. And with that higher increase in temperature, we're getting, you know, the ice melts. And so we think about these res res reserves of water here on earth kept in, you know, ice. As that ice melts, it increases as liquid water into our oceans and our ocean levels rise. And we have to think about the organisms that live, that their habitat is those living on that ice. You know, think about the polar bears. They're losing their habitat as the ocean rises. And think about what's gonna happen to them. Okay, going a little bit more about climate change. Climate change is quickly becoming the biggest threat to the long time survival of Earth's biodiversity. Climate change refers to any significant change in the measures of climate lasting again for an extended period of time. Average temperatures of the last century have already increased by more than one degree Fahrenheit. Now you think about that, you're like, what's one degree, right? That one degree has huge effects on all of these systems. It are in place here on Earth. Scientists have concluded that most of the observed warming is likely due to the burning of coal, oil, and gas. What are coal, oil, and gas? What are, we, what are, what are those known as? Any ideas? There we go. <laughs> Where's my chat box? Fossil fuels, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we hear a lot about these fossil fuels. And it's things that humans use to, you know, fuel like our cars. You know, we burn gasoline so that we can drive here and there. But as we're doing so, we're putting those pollutants up into the air. And we talk about the greenhouse effect. It naturally you know, we naturally have this greenhouse. Think of, you know, the atmosphere on Earth. It is a naturally kind of protective layer that keeps the temperature here on Earth at the right amount of warmness and coldness. Let's enough out, let's enough in. But with human activity, with this burning of these fossil fuels, we're adding more pollutants into the atmosphere and it's like trapping it in. It's collecting that heat and it's not letting that heat come out. Awesome, hey, welcome. Okay, so again, how does this affect us? You know, it's places, it affects our habitat, places for young to live, the water, the food, all of the right temperature that they need. So yeah, if you guys haven't seen the chat box here, um, Cecilia had said to everybody that if you are um, trying to qualify for the, the winter deal, which is awesome, thank you for joining today, um, make sure that your name is on here so we know to, so that we can give you credit for being here today. Awesome. Okay, so I talked very quickly there about a whole lot of stuff about biodiversity and the threats to biodiversity. And a couple of the big questions that we see in this unit, I just want to go over just to make sure that you're, you've got those ready, right ideas down. Okay, so when we think of a population, these are some of the questions that I've kind of pulled out from the unit and the different activities that I see um, students kind of have a, a a little struggle with. So the first one is what is a population? Is it all the, or all the members of a species living in a particular area at a particular time? All the organisms in an area? All the species on earth? Or is it the number of people? If you want, you can say it on the, out loud, you can unmute yourself, or if you want to take a, take a stab there, you can use your chat, and you can type in one of the letters, A, B, C, or D. A. You got to vote for A. Any other votes? 
Yes, A is correct. All the members of species living in a particular area at a particular time. And I threw that in there because um, a lot of times students will, will say, you know, um, all the organisms in an area or they'll say all the species on earth. And what's important about a population is that as we talked about it, think of a population, I always like to throw that example out, a population of a town or a city of, of humans. It's a particular area at a particular time. Okay. Rainforests. Are rainforests, are they an example of an area that has low biodiversity? So if we have low biodiversity, we're thinking about we have less variety of life. Is that true for a rainforest? You guys got it. That is false. Rainforests have high biodiversity, meaning there is a lot of variety of different species that live in that area. We talked about reasons why, you know, lots of humidity, so we're getting lots of moisture, so lots of um, plants. Temperatures, warmer temperatures. Moving on here, populations of organisms only interact with themselves. Is that true or false? That is false. Populations of organisms interact with both abiotic and biotic factors. So they're interacting with everything, the non-living parts of that environment, as well as the living parts of that environment. And there's that hippo question. What does hippo stand for? Um, habitat destruction, invasive species, pollution, population increase, and what's that O? What does that O stand for? over exploitation or over harvesting. So again, we've got destruction of habitats, invasive species, pollution, population, and over harvesting or over exploitation. So taking too much of a resource from that environment, not putting enough or saving enough so it can reproduce. Biodiversity is important because it helps with providing medicines, soil formation, clean air, all of the above. You're right, it's D, it's all of the above. Biodiversity is important. All of these are good examples of why we need to protect and keep biodiversity. A blink is an organism that is not native and has negative effects on our economy, our environment, or our health. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. An invasive species. So sometimes, um, if you're taking a quiz, here's a little, a little tidbit, little skill here to think about. If you are ever taking you know, a, a multiple choice quiz or you know, a short response type quiz or a variety of quiz that has different types of questions, sometimes if you look around, you might get some help on some of these questions to answer yourself. So these questions actually come from unit seven. And so as you think about up here in this question, they tell us, you know, invasive species kind of gives you that clue right there. Like, oh yeah, invasive species, now I remember. Extinction can be caused by human population, habitat destruction, pollution, all of the above. Uh -huh. That is correct. Hey, welcome. Um, yep, it is D, all of the above. So we're just going over some questions here with biodiversity. So yeah, uh, extinction caused by humans, caused by our population increase, habitat destruction, and of course our pollution. So all of those have an effect on our extinction, on extinction of organisms. Humans are the cause for more extinction, extinctions today. What do you guys think? Is that true or false? Humans. Mm -hmm. Hey, people are here. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hey, welcome. I'm just gonna, if you got some background noise, thank you. Okay, yeah, you can just mute yourself. Thank you. 
It is true, you guys. Humans are the cause for most extinctions today. So what I'm trying to... Hello? Hey. hey. <laughs> Welcome to the session. Let's see. Oh, you've got it. Okay. What's the subject? Uh, today we're talking about biodiversity and I'm just wrapping up talking about biodiversity. I'm going to open up to questions here in just a moment. Okay. Uh -huh. So kind of thinking about this biodiversity, we talked a little bit, kind of hinted and stressed upon it a little bit as we talk about humans. Humans are the cause for, you know, thinking about this, talking about climate change and extinction. We have to kind of think about how we want Earth to look like. How do we want to protect the resources that we have? And we have to look at our actions and think of ways, how can we change this so we don't have such a big effect on the other organisms or systems that are in place here on Earth? Okay, I do. I'm gonna jump down here to um, questions. So um, I talked to you guys about biodiversity, the importance of biodiversity, um, the threats to biodiversity, and what can happen if biodiversity kind of continues going off with extinction. Um, so this kind of continued on as we talked about genetics and natural selection, thinking about creating all of the life here on earth and thinking about how every one of those organisms or species here on earth has a particular role. And we wanna protect all of these organisms here on earth so that their, their role continues because if we pull one of those, we're going to have, you know, it's like a domino effect is going to happen. If we take an, a species away, or if we take a part, an abiotic or a biotic factor away from an ecosystem, it has an effect on it. It's not going to continue to work in balance like it did before. Most likely it's going to be a negative effect. And so we want to make sure the importance of, you know, looking forward, protecting um, our biodiversity and thinking about our, our actions as humans and what can we do to lessen our effect for our planet? Okay, so I'm gonna take a moment here and I'm gonna step back and ask you guys, do you have any questions? It can be about biodiversity. Um, it can also be about a topic that you're working on right now if you're not right there in, in biology or another course, um, or if you have a question about an assignment, this is an opportunity for you to get those questions answered right now. So you can unmute yourself. Awesome, you have a question. You can write in your chat just like Vanessa did. Go ahead. So Vanessa, if you wanna type out your question or if you wanna unmute yourself, whatever is your preference. Okay, go ahead and type in there. <laughs> okay, as we're waiting for Vanessa's question to come in, she's gonna type it in, her mic's not working. Any other questions? Somebody wants to unmute. How is science going? Hopefully good. Okay. If you're new, I'm going to go ahead and keep talking. If somebody wants to interrupt me and ask a question, please do so. Um, you know, as, as if you're new to these live sessions. So this is kind of the way I like to kind of go along with the agenda is that I talk a little bit about a particular topic, maybe go over a couple questions um, that come from that unit that I see kind of a little bit of a struggle on to make sure that you get that kind of clear idea. Um, but I also break it up into have these question and answer periods so that you can have the opportunity to get a question answered right then and there. So as you're thinking about these live sessions and you'll see them come up on your dashboard, um, you can kind of look ahead and then look at your courses and think about, oh, do I have a question? You know, and jump onto that or put it into your calendar that there's a live session that you'd like to go to. Uh, maybe jot a note down. You could have a little sticky note. 
however it is that you take notes, um, have that question and then come to the session, you know, ready with any questions that you might have. Okay. And also, you know, as you're going through your courses at any point in time, it doesn't have to be just on a live session and you have a question about a topic or an activity or, um, you know, maybe you're struggling with um, kind of the activity or the, the mode of the, maybe the assignments, and you have a question about it, please reach out to your teachers. Um, we're here to help you guys. And anytime we can help you get that question answered and get you moving along, we would be happy to do so. Um, also thinking about, you know, some of the assignments, if, you know, something doesn't work, um, I've had some questions about people from, from students about um, kind of the mode of the assignment, kind of what it's asking you to do, and sometimes maybe um, a particular tool, maybe, um, you know, a presentation type um, tool that the teacher's asking you to use on the assignment um, isn't, maybe you don't have access to it or it's not your best way to do it um, if you're, or if you have another suggestions on how you would like to get that assignment completed to show your understanding please do you know i would be happy to to work with you to make that um, work better for you okay so just think about i'm here for you your teachers are here for you we're all here to help you guys support okay we've got a question in here um, Okay, um, so we have a question about the abiotic and biotic factors. I was never able to fully understand what certain pictures or show or like habitats or atmospheres or whatnot. Um, I see a number eight in there. Is that coming from, um, is it in unit eight? No, oh, okay. <laughs> Was this from a particular um, assignment? I'm thinking of one of the, the pictures. Um, there was a picture kind of, a, a, I think it was like a pond ecosystem and they asked you to say what was living, what was abiotic and what was biotic. Was that the one you're thinking of? Sort of. Okay, so oh, you're forgetting the one. The, the idea is you're, um, if you're looking at a particular a picture that they're giving you and it says, how do you find out what is biotic and what is not biotic? Is that what you're asking? Let's see. So, um, okay. So biotic factors. So as we think about that prefix, I'm going to see if I can pull one up here too, as well as we think about that prefix bio. So we're looking at things that are living. Let's see changes in the ecosystem. Is that the one? No. Um, abiotic factors are going to be factors that are non-living um, in an ecosystem, but they are, of course, all connected and multitasking here guys i'm trying to to talk and find uh, an example of that question oops and i just went to the wrong semester as well so as we think about biotic factors those are going to be all of the living species so the organisms in that particular area so um again you're going to think about the little organisms like the bacteria and the microorganisms all the plants all the animals that live in that particular area. Mm -hmm. I tell you, whenever I want to find the one that I want, oh, I can't find it. Hang tight with me, you guys. Abiotic, on the other hand, is going to be the non-living thing. So we talked about that briefly right at the beginning. We talked about um, these are going to be things like the air, the temperature, the climate. Think about the amount of rainfall. Those are going to have an effect on all the organisms, the biotic factors that live there. Nope, not in that one either. So as we talked about, um, if you have an area, let's talk about oh, a desert, okay? 
Um, and we have the organisms that live there. So think about what lives in a desert. Low biodiversity there, but there's still organisms that live there. Think of a, a plant or a producer that lives there. A cactus, okay. And as we think about what do plants need, biggest thing, water. So an abiotic factor in that particular instance is going to be the amount of rainfall or water. That's going to affect the organisms that live there. If the desert does not get water, the plant could not survive. So again, as you think about areas in the desert, um, these organisms have kind of mechanisms that help them conserve water for longer, longer periods of time. But that's an example of showing you how they're connected in together. Okay. Okay. So as we think about habitats are going to be where a, a species, a particular species, um, lives. So it's like their, their home. Okay. As you think about a biome, a biome is going to be a type of area on Earth. So as you think about, um, it's usually defined by kind of the climate and also the um, biotic factors that live there. So as you think about like a desert, we talked about a rainforest, okay? You can take those two and you can see the big differences between them. In a desert, you've got um, less life, more extreme conditions, uh, warmer temperatures, and then you're gonna have um, can be very cold though also at night, but the amount of rainfall. And then you think of in a rainforest, you get lots of humidity, you get lots of moisture, you tend to have lots of life there. Okay, ecosystems. So as again, as you think about breaking this word down, you've got a system. So an ecosystem is actually looking at all of those factors in together. So a particular ecosystem is looking at the connections between those biotic and abiotic factors in an area. So think of like a pond ecosystem. You're looking at all of the factors, all the organisms living in that particular area together. Is that helping you? Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes when I get questions and I want to try and find um, a resource or an image or something to show you, and then I get sidetracked talking about it. Okay. Vanessa, do you have any more? Oh, good. Or um, does anybody else have any other questions? Good deal. Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, discussion posts and then I'll open it up for more questions um, again. But yeah, thanks for sharing. It's, it's great to get questions and get them answered as well. <laughs> okay, so again, we talked about discussion po posts. In your courses, you'll see these discussion posts come about. And um, in science, we have a couple different, different ones um, in biology. And we're going to take a look at one of them here today. So, as so we think about why do we have a discussion post? So, as you think, as you're going through your courses, you've got these different types of assignments and activities. You know, some of them are, you know, to show that you show have the understanding of the material, giving us some recall, some application, and then we got these discussion posts. They're kind of fun. Discussions allow us to share our thoughts, ideas. Um, to come to make a solution about, you know, so you think about it in your daily life. You have discussions with people to share what you're thinking, come up with uh, an idea, and then, of course, figure out a solution to it. Uh, we're all different people. Therefore, we all think differently and we have different viewpoints or ways of thinking. And sometimes when we have these discussion posts, it allows us to listen to other people. It helps to see thoughts that ideas, reasons, solutions that we might not have thought of. So we're getting these different viewpoints from a variety of different ways because we're all again individuals. We think differently. We see things differently. Our brains work differently. And by having these discussions, we can kind of, you know, 
open it up to this bigger collection of ideas and look at viewpoints that maybe you never thought of. I always do that when, you know, you go through this discussion post and you're reading other students' responses. Sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think of it that way. You know, it's like a good point. So in the discussion post that comes along with, um, in this unit, it is discussion post semester two, and it's called changes to the environment. And it, in the directions, it says, in this course, you've learned about factors affecting environments and the biodiversity on earth. In this discussion, discussion post, sorry, please share your thoughts on what is the most significant factor causing this. What role do humans have in protecting or changing this issue? And what are some steps or plans you would implement? Okay, so they give you a little blurb here to kind of get your mind thinking about. It. And then you start again, you're reading that, you're thinking about it in your mind, they give you some prompts or questions. And then of course you have a rubric, it kind of gives you the scoring guide here. So in this rubric, it tells you what you need to do to get the full points on this discussion post. Okay, so it's kind of like the, the requirements. What do you have to do? Okay, so there's our intro to it. And then we've got two parts that we're being asked to do or two requirements or two assessments um, to look at in this discussion post. The first one is role of humans. So going back up to that kind of thing, what role do humans have in protecting or changing this issue? So our category, our first category is role of humans. And then they give you kind of a point value. They get the maximum points, the middle ground, and then usually no points so how how to get a zero we go we also say does not meet meets standard and exceeds standard hope we're all here earning those full points so what do you need to do to earn the full amount of points you need to include three sentences posted with a specific example that reverse refers to the factors causing changes to the environment and then in here Thank you for joining. If you got to take off, hey, thanks for joining. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going here. Um, and then you can see as we move down to that point value, you can see it doesn't, it's like it's getting lesser and lesser. So instead of three sentences, we've got one to two sentences. And then of course, to get a zero, your comment either is not there or it doesn't address the question that was asked, okay? The second part to this is what steps or plans would you do use to implement this? So here's your steps for action. One or more ideas for action are given, can give you the full points, one and a half points, comment provided, but no action given, or a zero comment is not provided. Okay, so again, they're showing you, you know, based off what the prompt is, how to answer that question, and how to earn the most amount of points. So as I go up here to my role of humans, I need to include three sentences posted with a specific example that refers to the factors causing climate changes to the climate, to the environment, sorry. So if you were just to say, yes, I think humans have a role in um, affecting our environments, okay? You're starting your post, but in that, if you just say, yes, humans have a, a negative role, you're not giving an example. So you're not giving a specific example as to what factors might be causing, okay? So you wanna give a little bit more, you wanna give some specifics. And then of course, steps for actions. You wanna be able to explain, what could we do to change this? Let me show you some examples so you can see this. Okay. Um, these are some examples that I um, have received. It says, I believe humans are the cause for most of the bad things on this earth, making things change due to us using gas, making garbage, etc. We should switch to more environmental friendly things to prevent global warming and more. So we can see as we go back to that first part of the question here, they explain the role and they gave an example. And they also gave some ideas from implementation. So what they would do, some examples on how they would limit this or make it better, okay? 
um, as we think about, you know, where they could improve on this post, you know, as it said, three sentences, looks like the student pretty much gave, gave one on the role that humans play. But they did a good job giving an example, as well as hitting that post on what we could do to change it. Okay. I'm going to go down here to this one. I believe the biggest hindering factor for biodiversity is humans burning fossil fuels and destroying more and more land by the days. Humans are the only ones that can help the issue by making green patches, making hunting reserves. Uh, I know that that sounds weird, but it does help the animals as a controlled environment. Money most times is used to protect the wild ones. And burning far fewer fossil fuels. If I were allowed to implement change, I would try to convince more countries to cut back on fuel consumption. So here they gave some examples on the role that humans play as well as what they would do to implement a change. Okay. One thing I want to highlight in here is that you're not being assessed on what you believe. You're not being assessed. There is no right or wrong answer here. What they're asking for you is to share your, your thoughts. Again, it's a discussion. We're looking at you know, different ways that people think about this and what we could do to change it, okay? So you might think that humans don't have um, a role in affecting our environments. And that's fine if you believe that, as long as you can back it up with examples to show that, okay? Maybe you have um, some good reasons on steps for actions to implement this. And again, the idea about this discussion post is to share our thoughts. Again, as we said, everybody's going to be thinking differently. Everybody's going to come up with different ideas or solutions to this. The more ideas that we have and the more discussions we have about this topic, it can lead to a better way to solve this problem. Okay. So as we're thinking about making these discussions, I don't want you to be discouraged or get kind of focused on the right or right answer. It's not about that, it's about your thoughts. And then look at that rubric and you'll see what it is that you need to accomplish. And that's it, okay? So in this particular one, you wanna make sure that you have three sentences posted with specific examples to refer to factors causing changes to the environment. You know, you could talk about human population. You could talk about habitat destruction, some of the ones that we talked about today. Pollution. And then steps for actions, as we saw in those example, um, burning less fossil fuels, helping people recycle, um, dispose less waste, reduce, reuse, recycle. Okay. So I wanted to show you again, kind of end with looking at the reason why we have these discussion points, kind of the pros and cons, and hopefully you're going through and you're reading um, your classmates' ideas as well. And you're totally welcome to um, comment on them, reply back to them. Um, in the earlier discussion post, it was actually one where you did, um, part of the requirement was to reply to another student. And in this particular one, it's a different one where you didn't, but you had to give ideas for an action, okay? Okay, so as you move forward with these discussion posts, again, like I said, it, it's fun and it, it's informative and it, it's good to read what other students are thinking. Because again, you might think of, find out things, see things in a different way that it's, you might think, kind of open up our minds a little bit, get some, get some thoughts going, but also make sure that you're looking at that rubric and using that to score. You can even use it to score yourself as you post, you know, you can look at this and say, did I check this and did I check this and you can actually grade yourself okay okay I'm gonna end there and I'm gonna open it back up to you guys if you have any more questions before we end this live session I'm gonna give a moment if you have something you can type in or you can unmute yourself I'm gonna continue to talk though <laughs> just for time purposes here. Um, with these live sessions, so you can kind of see how they go. Again, it's always great to bring questions or um, something that you're working on. If you have, bring it to your live session so you can get that answered. Great to hear I answered everything. Yay! Um, again, they're here. We're here to help you guys um, and get you the information and the um, answers that you need so you can move forward. 
I also like to say, if you have an idea for a live session, if you're working on something or you see something coming up and um, you would like uh, your teacher, if you like me, um, to take that and maybe do a little bit more on it and give a live session. I would love to get your input on an idea that you might have for a live session. You can, of course, send it to me here in our chat. You can um, send it to me through chat or email, you know, online or as one comes to you this week. That would be great. I'd love to help you guys out. Okay, so moving forward, again, like I said, these are recorded and we do have a collection in our library You can get the links and you can go to those. So as you're going through your courses and maybe you're stuck on something, you might wanna check in that library and see, you know, hey, did my teacher do, um, was there a live session on that particular topic or even the activity? And there's lots of them in there. So those are very helpful um, as you're going through these. Also, um, if you have questions, your teacher here, we're resources. We're here to help you guys and get things, um, help you guys out, get your questions answered, get you moving through these courses. So please don't ever get discouraged or frustrated or unmotivated. Reach out. We're here to support you guys. Okay. I know that there is another um, session coming up right after this in just, I think, a little bit like 25 minutes. Um, there is an English session. So if you guys want to stick around, you'll have to log on to the, the, the next link for that one. But, okay. Thanks for joining you guys. Make sure that your name is on here so that you can get credit for the, um, the winter deal. And you guys all have a wonderful day. Um, good luck in science. Again, reach out to your teachers. We are here to support you guys. Have a great day. Thanks for joining. We'll see you guys later.